Hey guys, I'm here at the climbing wall at Miramichi Valley Bible Camp, where lots of teens come every summer with a goal in mind. Get to the top of this wall. And it's harder than it looks, so it's a good goal. And some teens make it, and like some goals, some teens will just have to try again next summer. But listen, right now, I want you to stop and think for a second. What are some of my goals? Okay, great, now hang on to those goals and remember them because for the next few weeks, we're gonna address a few questions like, what goals should I have for my life? Or what do my goals have to do with God's goals? Or how can I achieve my goals? To do that, I wanna introduce you to someone from scripture who had a huge goal of his own. First, a little background. We're gonna be looking at a book from the Old Testament of the Bible. That's the part that was written before Jesus and is the story of the Jewish people. The book we're reading is called Nehemiah, written by a guy named, you guessed it, Nehemiah. About 140 years before this book begins, the Jewish people were conquered by an enemy army that took control of Jerusalem. They destroyed the city and burned the temple where the Jewish people worship God. And they sent many of God's people into exile. Through the prophets, God promised to restore and rebuild Jerusalem and that God's people would return. But this was a devastating loss for the Jewish people. After Jerusalem was destroyed, a new king took control and some of God's people began to return to Jerusalem looking for ways to rebuild what they had lost. But this was a long process. About 140 years after Jerusalem was destroyed, the story of Nehemiah begins. Nehemiah was passionate about seeing Jerusalem restored, but he wasn't just anybody. He was serving in the government, working for the king of Persia. Now, Nehemiah had a big goal inspired by a big problem. Nehemiah already knew that Jerusalem had been destroyed. That was old news. But when Hanai told him that the Jewish people were returning Jerusalem and the walls were still in shambles, Nehemiah saw the problem. Without walls, God's people will be vulnerable to another attack. But there was also a spiritual problem. You see, the city of Jerusalem was deeply connected with the Jewish people's relationship with God. Rebuilding the walls would be a way for them to honor God. But leaving them in shambles would be a sin against God. Nehemiah wanted to see the whole nation of Israel turn back to God. So he set a God-sized goal find a way to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah's goal wouldn't just benefit himself, but would serve his people and God too. His goal began with difficulty. Nehemiah didn't set his goal because he needed a cool New Year's resolution. He set it because there was a problem that needed to be solved, and he believed that he could help solve it. When Nehemiah identified the problem that needed to be solved, he grieved and wept. See, solving this problem wasn't just a fun hobby. It mattered deeply to him. His goal began with prayer. As Nehemiah wept, he also fasted and prayed. He knew his goal was so big that he couldn't do it by himself. Before he made a single move, he asked God for wisdom, guidance, and help. Then he kept praying for months. His goal began with God's help. Nehemiah stood up from his prayer and fasting, determined to attempt a series of impossible tasks. He knew his own wisdom and experience wasn't enough to guarantee success, so he asked God for help. The size of this goal forced Nehemiah to put all of his faith in God, who would do what Nehemiah couldn't. The book of Nehemiah begins with destruction, loss, grief, and tears, but that's not where this story is going to end. When Nehemiah heard the news about Jerusalem's crumbling walls, he discovered an important truth. Big difficulties inspire God-sized goals. It's not hard to set goals that benefit you. Most of us do that every New Year's. But those kind of goals are like running on a treadmill. You see, on a treadmill, some people can run for hours, logging tons of miles and burning lots of calories, but they aren't going anywhere. No matter how many steps they take, they'll never leave the place they started. When we set us-sized goals, it's like running on a treadmill. We don't really go anywhere. And guess what? We're the only ones who benefit. So what's the alternative? 
How can we learn from Nehemiah and set God-sized goals that can change the world? See, we can set little goals like maybe learning a song on the piano, but that's not gonna change the world, is it? It begins with difficulty. I don't mean you need to cause yourself difficulty, and I don't mean you need to wait until something difficult happens to you. There are difficulties happening all around us. We just need to open our eyes and notice. Maybe you've experienced difficulty like loss, bullying, discrimination, or difficulties with your family or health. Chances are someone has experienced the same difficulties that you have. So how can you help? Maybe that's where your God-sized goal can begin. Maybe you haven't experienced very much difficulties, but you can see plenty of problems in the world around you. See, people are hurting and struggling and in pain. Maybe that's where your God-sized goal can begin, by focusing on the needs of others. You know, we often find our God-sized goals hidden within something that we're passionate about. Just like Nehemiah, our passions can often be inspired by difficulties we see or experience. There's this, begin with prayer. If you're not sure what your God-sized goal could be, start by asking God to open up your eyes to the people who need help around you. If you feel like God is leading you towards a need or a goal, share it with people that you trust and see what they think. Wise people can help us set God-sized goals. Begin with God's help. We'll need God's help if our goals are really God-sized. Just like Nehemiah was desperate for God to do something impossible, let's believe God can do impossible things through us too. Then ask God, give me the strength to do something about the pain, hurt, and difficulties I see around me. Have you chosen a goal yet? Have you dreamed big enough? If you're not sure, that's okay. For the next few weeks, we're going on a journey to discover what kinds of goals God might be calling us to pursue. Today is just the beginning. This week, I hope you'll think about this question. What breaks my heart? Or maybe, what should break my heart? How can difficulty in your life or in the world inspire you to dream about what God can do? How can you help God do it? I know the question, what are my goals in life, can be scary. But instead of waiting around for inspiration or cues, what if you, just like Nehemiah, looked for problems that needed to be solved? Whether those problems impact you, others, or the whole world, big difficulties can inspire God-sized goals. I can't wait to see what kind of God-sized goals you begin to pursue.